Hi everybody, it's Susan from Sunrise Quilt Studio and today I'm getting started on appliquing these china plates to a background. So I wanted to show you how I'm going to go about that and show you a little bit about the applique stitch that I use. Okay, first thing I needed to do is to figure out exactly how big this block is um, in both directions um, at the widest point. And at the widest point this is a 16 inch china plate and that's from tip to tip of these points here, the green points. So then I had to decide how much space I wanted around them and I decided to go ahead and cut an 18 and a half inch piece of fabric and that will give me like two inches on each side of the plate on these edges here. And that way uh, when I get done appliquing if I want to I can cut this down a little bit and you know maybe make it a 17 inch block if I want but 18 seemed like a good place to start so I got some white cotton fabric and I cut this into um, 18 and a half inch squares and next thing I need to do is to find the center and to do that I'm going to fold the fabric in half Just like this and I'm going to go ahead and press this Now you can use when you're appliquing use whatever color you want for your background it doesn't have to be white but I just thought it would look good with these blocks and then I'm going to fold it in half the opposite direction so it makes it a square so now where these two press lines meet is the center. So I know right there is the center. Um, now since this block has an open area, it's open here, but I can also use these creases that were pressed in here as a guideline on where to place the areas where these uh, little melon shapes come together so I can get it centered that way. So now I know that this is pretty well centered and, and to double check I can always measure right around here though that isn't quite as important because I can always trim this down and square it up and as I hand applique it may pull up a little bit and be uneven anyway so um, I've got this all ready to go and now I need to get my pins and just pin it down. Um, now they do make applique pins that you may know about and they're very short. Um, the short pins. Now these are um, extra long pins and they're specially made for uh, quilting. So um, I don't have any trouble using them but um, if you would prefer to use a short applique pin you know do that. That's fine. You can also spray baste these down. You can glue baste them down. Uh, whatever works for you. And then once you get them pinned down you can hand baste or machine baste them further to make them more secure. So lots of different things you can do. But I'm going to start here. Make sure the design is flat. And then I'm just going to continue placing pins. I want one pin in each blade. That's just my preference. There's no hard and fast rules for this. Just put in as many pins as you need. And I try to place them away from the edges so that I can um, get my hand sewing needle in there and hopefully not get tangled up, the thread tangled up in the pin heads. And you can also machine applique these down. You can hand applique them down. You can fuse them down if you want. You have a lot of options when you're doing applique. So I'm just going to go ahead and pin this all down. And when I get it all pinned down then I'll show you how I hand applique. Okay I'm going to uh, start applique on this piece and I wanted to show you um, applique stitch. 
Um, I'm, the thread I'm using is a 50 weight. This is so fine and the color is 401 and it's a slightly off white and it matches my background fabric here. And um, that's usually what I'll do is just match my background fabric. And I've got the thread knotted and I came up from underneath, grabbed a few threads of the applique and then pulled the needle through. And then what I'm going to do is to go down right next to where I came up and through the background fabric and then come up about an eighth of an inch away and grab a couple threads of my applique pull that through and then just give it a little bit of a tug and it kind of seats it into the applique fabric and then once again where the thread is coming up I'm going to go down right next to it into the background and then up to through the applique about an eighth of an inch away and if you can see I just have a few threads get that to focus there you just a few threads of the applique fabric in there and then just give it another tug now this is a sharps needle and this is a number seven um, you can use whatever needle you're comfortable with and this is the same stitch that I use to um, sew the bindings to the back side of my quilts. It's just a stitch that I'm comfortable with. And a lot of people will use a whip stitch um, or some other um, blind hem stitch, but um, I like the applique stitch, so I do that. And this is just kind of, you know, relaxing work. You can sit on your couch, turn on a movie, or sit by your computer and watch YouTube videos you know whatever you like to do put on an audiobook listen to that go out on your porch and enjoy the nice weather if you're having nice weather and uh, applique while you're you're outside I do that sometimes especially if my daughter is outside or um, And she's doing her thing and I'm doing mine. She likes to go outside and sit on the porch and listen to or to watch YouTube videos and I'll sit there and I'll applique while she's doing her thing. So we're out there together each doing our own thing but it's kind of nice companionship. So anyway I'm going to continue appliquing this block and I'll do this all the way around and then I'll go to the center and applique that part next and then I have four more blocks to do and then I can decide on how I want to lay this out whether I want to do it on point or if I want to um, you know just do it side by side if I want to put in sashing now if I wanted to do this on point what I probably would have done would be to set this differently and I would have um, ironed in some creases from corner to corner in the block and then arrange the, the points so that they are facing the corner of the top. But there is enough fabric on here that I can also cut this and cut the corners, trim the corners off, and then make this an on-point block. But my plan was not to do this on point, so um, that's how I'm doing that here. Um, also on your plates, this plate is a little bit wonky it is not perfectly round and it's not perfectly symmetrical and um, I'm judging just by the center of this quilt and that leaves one of these points is a little bit off the center line that I have marked here and that's okay it's not going to be a big issue because I don't have this on point which is one of the reasons I decided not to put them on point because not all of these green blades the green blades that are um, pointed they would not line up exactly in the corner of the background square so that would just kind of emphasize the fact that those plates aren't perfectly symmetrical so I'm just trying to camouflage that fact and um, we're, I'm just going to do them straight like this so I'm going to go ahead and work on this and um, as the weeks go on I'll show you uh, how I've got this quilt put together and I'll show you the quilting. Now I've been through all of my um, projects and I have 
only one more quilt top to quilt and it's one that I've kind of decided not to because it's it's kind of falling apart it's um, another um, Lone Star quilt and it's one that I bought several years ago at a flea market and I've already done a lot of repair work on it but I am not certain that it would hold up to machine quilting or even hand quilting it's it's just in kind of bad shape so I'm just going to leave that quilt top the way it is so what I have left I have a lot of vintage blocks to put together so that's what I'm going to be doing and I'm going to start with these and um, then work on another set of blocks and I'll just keep doing that and then I can go out shopping and um, buy some new quilt tops and get back to uh, doing a lot more machine quilting so the machine quilting is probably going to be a little bit slower um, at the moment until I can get some tops made and then I'll put them on the machine and we'll do more of that. Please stay safe, play, stay healthy, and I hope to see you in the next video. Thanks for watching. For more quilting ideas, click on the video links. And to keep up with my latest projects, click on the subscribe button. I hope to see you again soon.